There will have been a few weeks during the course of this season when trainer Nicky Henderson wouldn't have been sure himself <laughs> where the next winner was coming from, but he can now put that to rest because he's had a, a very good week at Aintree, including that brace of uh, Grade 1 victories courtesy of Sir Gino and particularly John Bond, who won a spectacular edition of the, of the Melling Chase and had to show his class and toughness. Uh, and Nicky can join me now. I'd say a slightly more relaxed figure than maybe a few weeks ago, Nicky. Well done. <laughs> As I said, it is quite nice to be back. Um, I think for the last three weeks, we've done plenty of talking amongst all you guys, but normally it's about sick horses or not running horses and gloom and doom. So it's it's nice. And what a great week this was. I think you will not see three better days racing anywhere. And I just thought, well done, Aintree, well done, everybody, because it was just, it's great fun. And I just thought it went really well. Great results, great finishes, great Grand National. There are proper three days that I think need celebrating. Um, can we talk about Iron Maximus? <laughs> I, I could have told you quite a lot about him a few years ago. It, it was... I genuinely wanted him to win. I mean, you know, he's JPs and Willie's a great mate. And we had him as a young horse for two seasons and, and he was a lovely, lovely big horse. He was a big, big baby, and I suppose our, our only contribu contribution to this whole thing was probably to mind him through those early days, because it would have been easy to overdo him. He had talent, but he didn't know how to use it, and he's grown up a lot now, and I'm, I'm thrilled he, he won. I mean, the, my two were Ryan Maximus and, um, and Roddy Sauce, um, Galvin, that I was sort of going to shout home, and they were first and fourth, so... I would. I'm just a great race, and I'm. I'm. I'm sure the Maximus. Would, you know, it, it was tinged with a fair bit of sadness because Mike Greg was the most lovely, lovely guy, and we had some wonderful times. Um, and sadly, the horses had to go to Ireland, and then sadly we've lost Mike. But it was lovely that um, that the whole family were there yesterday, and I know it's very emotional for them. But Maxine and and all the children and. You know, it was. It was sad, but it was great, and it must be celebrated that way, and we just remember a lovely man. Um, lovely words. For, for you and your team at Seven Barrows, plenty to celebrate this week as well. Uh, John Bond's victory, I, I thought, was significant in so many ways. What, what pleased you the most about it? Um, in fact, he has been in a fair few fights, and he's always showed that he's capable, but he had to dig very deep here. Um, I don't, not because it was an extra half a mile that we didn't know about, but it was just the fact that it was a great race. Um, they'd gone a proper gallop all the way. The jumping had been very good across the board. John Barton, it's the best I've seen him jump. Um, and, yeah, it, 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 was a, it was a mighty relief, I have to say. It's, a, it's been a touch-and-go season with him that we had to miss Cheltenham. Um, the time before in the rearranged Clarence House didn't go according to plan. Otherwise, he's had a good year. You know, he won the Schlur and the Tingle Creek. So it's, um, you know, he's, he's getting quite good at these grade ones. He's collected a fair few along the way, but he has fought very, very hard here. And you'd have to be very proud of him and of Nico. And I went mentioning Nico, I've got to think back to Aidan Coleman and say, look, he retired last week. and. He was a big part of this horse's early chasing career and youngster. But, um, and, but, you know, we'll miss him. And I, I hope he has a long and happy retirement. I'm sure he will. Um, but Nico's on board now, and I think he gets on with the horse very, very well. Mm. And they understood each other big time on Friday. The jumping was great. The best I've seen him jump. And he put I just, his just, head Nicky, down I, just, and, I just want to show you something, actually, on that. You may have seen this already. The... The race IQ data, where we're measuring how much ground horses are making up and losing at their fences, um, John Bond was significantly better than, than the runner-up. Now, Conflated was making a lovely shape over his fences, um, but John Bond was that good bit quicker. He gained 4.73 lengths jumping through the race. Really? Now, yeah. I know this is only one part of it, but it, it, it's that speed over his fences, clearly, that is, that is putting him at an advantage. It is. It's interesting. I haven't, um, I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, I think he was. He was slick 
I suppose, you know, in a funny way, you probably look back and say, well, there he is. He's, he is a two-miler. He probably jumps like a two-miler. Um, but he, he was he was having a real cut at it the whole way. Um, I think I said the, actually the only one he got wrong was the last. But he was in and out of that very, very quickly. He's always been able to... AP watches him school a lot. You see him every time he's school. And we, we do do more jumping with this horse than I think I've done with any other, to be honest with you. Nico loves schooling him, but, you know, AP's down watching every day and he, we've got one fence and he just meets it on exactly the same stride, which is actually a wrong stride. Every time, our, th our third fence of the five we have here, uh, he always meets it on a wrong stride and he has to dance. Mm. And he does that very quickly. Um, and I think that helps him get in and out quickly as well. So he's won a, a race on testing ground at two and a half miles against very good horses in that discipline. And I, I know you said after the race, you said, I tried to get some encouragement from Nico that I could push maybe to three, I'm guessing with things like the King George in your mind. But Nico wasn't giving you that sort of encouragement. <laughs> are, are you... Have you got a clear idea in your mind what the immediate and medium-term future might hold? Well, I think we look at the immediate. I wouldn't rule out... Well, two years ago, he went from Aintree to Sandown mm -hmm. um, for the celebration chase. I was actually trying to establish, was he a two-miler or a two, did we want further? Because we were going to go for the two-and-a-half-mile novice chase that year in Aintree. And the two-miler was just so much easier. We'd stayed at two. And I wanted to find out how he'd get on with the older two-mile chasers at Sandown. And he did. He absolutely hammered them. So that left us in this two-mile division for probably longer than I would have anticipated. So it's taken until this week to actually up him at all. I would have thought two and a half was probably perfect for him. Um, because of the... Um, <laughs> his first reaction was two, two and a half. Um, and didn't like my idea of three but we've got a long summer to think about it but in the meantime i think there's every possibility he will come again either at sandown or punchestown so sandown um, for the for the celebration at punchestown yes. drop back to two again yeah yeah which he won so well last year beating captain guinness of course yeah and i would have thought there's, there's a possibility now you know, it depends where everybody else is going to go I suspect we're going to see quite a bit more of Willie over here mm. in the next fortnight, um, which will be entertaining, if nothing else. Um, and it, it might just depend where, who's going what and where. If you waited for Punchestown, we'd get another four days, which could be helpful. I think he's quite a fresh horse. I think where we were lucky, possibly to our advantage after all the shenanigans at Cheltenham that we did actually come in to, to, Cheltenham, to Aintree with, with fresh horses. Um, in some cases, maybe a bit too fresh. But, but you know, it, it could have played to our hands. Um, and I think having missed one festival, then perhaps we can tack another one on at the end. Mm. With, we're monitoring very, very closely this week and um, talked to... JP and Frank and AP and <laughs> any P you want, but um, <laughs> and the, the first actually the P that really will have, hold the hand is Paddy, who rides him every day and knows him absolutely inside out. Nobody else does ride him because it just upsets the horse. So we'll just continue, and Paddy can be the judge. Um, well, we wish him well. We wish Paddy well, and and fingers crossed for for John Bond wherever he appears next. Uh, what were your thoughts on? On Sir Gino, he had to get he had to get down and dirty to beat a very talented filly in in Cargizzi, who'd been second in the Triumph Hurdle. Um, is this is this as good as Sir Gino is, or is he better than this? His jumping could just thickened up a little bit in the straight, couldn't it? But I, do, I think they think plenty of the of the runner up here, um, and I don't think it was any disgrace. It's only the third race of his life. They've come a long way away, haven't they, from the from the other protagonists? And I mean, we do think he's very, very good. Um, I think he's uh, seriously top class, very top class. And uh, I, he he won't be going anywhere after this. You know, not not as if he had a desperately hard race, but it was a very good race. There were 
they went at it from a way out because it had been messy early on. They'd been playing with each other. I think Paul and Nico were having, um, I mean, friendly words because I think they're very good mates, I believe, and that which is great. And I think they were, you know, they're two jockeys playing jockeys, but they respect each other. And it's always nice to see that. And there was the, the gamesmanship was all very fair and fair and um yeah it's good but i think uh, we'll leave him alone for now and wait and see what happens next season right that four or five season can be notorious difficult for those sort of horses um he didn't run in the triumph which is probably a blessing at the end of the day um but you know you see how willie's campaigned lossy mouth this year and i would think he's probably just about got that dead right yeah. um um, but we'll, we'll try and campaign to Gino as, as much as we can next year. Um, obviously, you, you don't have the, the luxurious option that he had of sliding him into something like the Mayor's Hurdle. So uh, I guess you have to train him like a champion hurdle horse, don't you? Constitution Hill or no Constitution Hill? Well, exactly. And I mean, <laughs> you will not be surprised to know that I think I know that two mile pattern pretty well. Um, and you haven't got a lot of options because you've only got the fighting fifth, the Christmas hurdle, the Unibet, the champion hurdle, and then if whatever you want to do after Cheltenham. Well, that's for one horse. So if you've got two of them, I'm certainly not complaining. No. But, um, the, the, you know, we might have to, um, yeah, it could, it, could be, it could be difficult. But let's, you know, we've got to concentrate on getting Constitution back in the first place. Um, and... You know, I hope this, I think this is very, very good. And Joe Donnelly, he's been wonderful. He's got some lovely horses. He, you know, again, he's between Willie and ourselves, we're very, very lucky. A great man. And it's good fun. And we enjoy having him for him. And he deserves the luck he's had the last Cheltenham and here. Um, it's, um, he it deserves it as much as anybody else. Um, did Shishkin not get the rub of the green or did he not get out of bed the right side? Um, I think you're right. That watching it, the, the the overhead picture, the, just for me, he was he's just probably lacking a gear at the moment. It's funny, having been a two-miler, he was always threatening to get into the race, but I think the other boys had him sussed. And they were every time Nico was trying to get out, he wasn't quick enough to grab the... The horse, I mean, not Nico, the horse wasn't quick enough to grab the opportunity. And as soon as he sort of just didn't quite get there, the other boys were able to put him back in his pocket and say, stay there. And he, he, he's run a very genuine race, I think, but he just looked, he could be a bit sharper. Um, we would definitely be thinking of going to punch us down. Um, I think Nico feels the trap might help him. Um, He's 11 now, and he's only had, well, I don't need to reiterate his chapter of, of disasters this year. He didn't start at Ascot. He tripped himself up at Kempton. He won the Denman nicely. So he's only really had, this is only his second completed start of the season. So he can go again. I mean, he seems fine back here now this morning, and we're just going to freshen him up as best we can. And if everything says go, I don't see why he shouldn't go to Ireland. And um, yes, I think Nico does think the track will suit him a bit better. I don't know. Well, we can guess what's going to turn up there. It's going to be a rerun of the Gold Cup, I would imagine. Mm. But um, if he's well, I'd, I'd like to go. Nicky, thanks for your time. Well done this week. Thanks, Nick, very much. Nicky Henderson. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.